Hi, everybody. My name is Ben Wright Human, cartoonist extraordinaire, and welcome to the 100th cost pain strip. Uh, I'm very excited for this one. I've been just, it's amazing to me that this strip has lasted 100 uh, strips, and I'm just really excited that uh, I get to share it with everybody. And the funny thing is, while my comic's mostly about cosplay, uh, for this one, I decided to break out a tabler strip, which I also do as part of this comic. Uh, and it's something I've been a little hesitant to do in the live streams, because you're going to see me cheat a little bit. But in the long run, I personally think it's okay. Some people are going to disagree, but it is what it is. So I'll let you take a quick look at the joke before I really get started. Uh, the thumbnail itself, I always do beforehand because I'm always planning these strips in advance. But everything else you're going to see today. So the basic joke, the con ends. And while packing up, the staff offers not only to help with breakdown, but offers to give serious food. And the response is best con ever. Pretty straightforward, and I really wanted the 100th strip to be positive. And I felt that it was probably a good idea for me to do a tabler strip for it, because right now, since comics take up a lot of my creative energy, I haven't had a lot of time for cosplay. I'm more often experiencing con life as a tabler. So it felt like an appropriate way to wrap up this particular milestone. Now, before we get started, there's one thing I did forget to do beforehand. And that is change the title to Hospitality. I have gotten entirely through a comic and created the uh, image files and just gotten it ready to put online and then realized it still said insert title here because I just straight up forgot that uh, I needed to do that. So here's how this is going to work today. Normally, I break these live streams into two. Uh, one I usually do on a Friday and the other one I do on a Sunday. And uh, instead, I decided to start a lot earlier and I'm going to be doing this all at once. I, it, depending on how long it takes, I may take a break in the middle, which will roughly be two hours in, uh, just so I can refill my uh, drink and get a uh, bathroom break, whatever I need. And then we'll keep going. It's not going to be a long break, but uh, you should see this comic pretty much from start to finish by the end of the broadcast. So without further ado, let's dive right into drawing stuff. To image files. Count your pencils. One and background pencils. The inspiration for this particular strip was a con that I got to do a little bit of um, earlier this year. I'll explain what I mean by that. The con is OhioCon. It's an anime convention in Columbus. Uh, its website is www. I have it written down to make sure www.ohiocon.org, O-H-A-Y-O-C-O-N.org. Uh, this con is one that uh, I've wanted to do for a little while. I'd gone to it as an attendee a very long time ago, back when I was first getting into... Oh. Let me fix something. But back when I was first getting into uh, convention life, as a novice cosplayer, I had friends that lived, that were still going to college in Ohio. I'd already graduated, but I would come and see them, and it was fantastic. Uh, the funny thing, though, is there were some problems with the con back then. And when I started tabling, it kind of wasn't high on my list of priorities, as in particular, I thought their artist alley did not look very good. Um, and I stopped going around 2011 because I had friends who graduated and it just, it stopped being a high priority. I started getting more into making my own comics. I didn't have as much time or resources for traveling. And then I moved to Columbus a couple years ago and went back 
And the con, especially its artist alley, has gotten infinitely better than it used to be. Um, and I've actually heard a lot of positive progress in other ways with this convention. They really try, they, and the staff seems to do a great job. Uh, they listen to feedback, they improve, they do all these things. And this past year, I wasn't able to get a table. I was waitlisted. But they had a policy that they let us know about where if you're not able to get a table, let's make sure I did that consistently. If you're not able to get a table uh, beforehand, you can show up with your stuff about an hour before the dealer's room is supposed to open, and you will, they'll, if they, anyone has not claimed a table, you might be able to get one. Uh, this is a policy I, kind of, I really like. Uh, it's good for getting local artists in, even if they didn't make it the first time. Um, so I came in, and I believe I was eighth in line. Uh, and unfortunately, it ended up being they only had seven tables. So I didn't get one. But what ended up happening instead, I gave the staff people my card and said, hey, I'll be at this con anyway all weekend. Um, and I'm local, so I always have my stuff on me. So just let me know if anything comes up, and I'm happy to take a table for however much time I can get. You know, and they're this, as far as I could tell, no one had done this to them before. They're like, okay, like, why not? I'll pay attention. And just in case something comes up, we uh, might take you up on that. And Saturday, I get a uh, an email from them saying, Hey, we had someone who sold all their stuff and left. So would you like a table for one day? This is how much we'll charge you for it. And I was like, yes, sure. Great. Why not? So I did that. I need to turn down these thumbnails. They're a little, I need to get a better look at the pencils. There we go. I'm gonna fix that now because I'm not happy with it. So I tabled for one day. Uh, I will say, unfortunately, it was not particularly profitable just because uh, I got the impression with three day cons, it's variable what day is your most profitable day. Um, usually it's either Saturday or Sunday. Saturday because it's the biggest. Uh, day that people turn out, and Sunday because a lot of people shop during the con and don't buy till the last day when they budget it. Um, in this case, it looks like the big day for this con was uh, Saturday, because Sunday I had very, very low sales, but I had a foot in the door, so I'm hoping next year I'll have better luck. Um, but one of the things that really floored me about this con was that they were very, very good to us in a lot of other ways. The staff offered to help me break down because they saw I was solo. And at the end of the con, sorry, I'm bringing up a reference image. Um, I'll get this off the stream. Where'd it go? There you are. I feel like drawing these guys from memory, something's off. So I'm just going to bring up a recent strip with them. I don't draw both of these guys that often. Oh, that should be a good one. Right, her face is a little bit. Honestly, the main thing is her head's a little bigger. I'm gonna, since it's pencils, I will just enlarge. But yeah, one of the big things that they did was they announced over the PA system that if you were a tabler, while you're breaking down, if you wanted, they had some food for us. And it was real food. It was uh, wraps. They, it was burritos with salads. It was things that 
uh, were really, really helpful to get. And it's something that I'd like to see more cons start doing since, uh, honestly, it doesn't, if I don't do well at a con, it doesn't mean I'm not going to come back, especially if the staff is really cool and helpful. If I have a good experience at the con, that means almost as much to me as making sales. Okay, making sales is pretty important, but it's something that, I'm willing to cut a con some slack if the people who work it are cool people. And it's one of the things I wanted to bring up with this particular strip because I had this fantastic experience. And I often like, I often use these uh, tabling characters who are based on my good friends, uh, Angela Boyle and Abe Olson, who just got married. Congratulations. Um, But uh, I usually use these guys as a way of expressing my frustration with how a con went and things like that. I'm going to need to move him over. Now I'm probably going to shrink everything a little bit so they're less cut off. It's funny, uh, when I, I actually did a doodle of the two of them in the style for, of cost pain, and then looked at it and was like, I think I may need to use these guys as my tablers. I'm actually not going to want his hands to show, so I'm going to move him down a little bit. And it obviously was not exact, like part of the point was, uh, so one of my rules with cost paint is I don't want anybody to be an exact analog of any individual person because it's, I'm trying to make archetypes more than anything. Um, I have some friends who will look at the uh, various stories that I tell and be like, you're basically just describing my life. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm trying to describe it I am trying to keep it in general terms. It's not specifically about you. Um, and a lot of stuff is based on individuals, and I often try to call it out when that happens. And I'll just, when I do the actual inks, I'll be cleaner about it. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah. I recently had another con that was good about uh, feeding us. It was Three Rivers Comic Con. Uh, this was a con that I almost didn't do again. Because last year, it was in a bad venue. Um, and I'm not just saying that. This was the general consensus with uh, among most of the tablers. And let's just do that. I'm keeping these grids basic and you'll see why a little bit later. And it's, it'll, it's what I'm talking about with cheating. But uh, I know I've drawn Mike. The uh, Tape, the uh, staffer that I bring up is named Mike, by the way. I don't think I've formally named him in the comic, but that's the name I gave him for some reason. Um, but yeah, the biggest problem with Three Rivers last year was the venue. It was set up in a condemned mall, basically. In uh, I think it used to be the Macy's. And the venue was just awful. There were... There was, no real AC. Uh, it got crazy hot, and it just was very uncomfortable. And 
I basically decided like the people this con seemed pretty cool. Like they, they, one of the big things they did was they kept us hydrated at that con. Like they knew the issue with the AC, there was nothing they could do about it. Uh, but they did make a point of having tons of bottled water. So we were, I think I had to drink, I drank a few gallons of water that, um, over two days. It was necessary because it was sweltering hot. And they also had food, they had all this stuff that made it really easy. And so I said to myself, I will go back to this con if they change the venue. And lo and behold, they changed the venue. And I went back this year, they still had food, drink, all that stuff. The staff was incredibly helpful, incredibly cool. There we go. And it was just, there we go. I'm going to block a letter of it when I uh, do the inking. It's a little easier to do it if you have the letters filled in because then you block more accurately. So, uh, yeah, it's a con that I highly recommend. It's located in, uh, what's the town name? Like West Mifflin, something like that, right outside of Pittsburgh in uh, Pennsylvania. And um, if you want to check it out, it's threeriverscomiccon.com. Uh, All together, number three, rivers, comiccon, C-O-M-I-C-O-N.com. I don't know why they spell uh, Comic-Con that way. It's one of the only times I've seen it spelled that way for an, an official con. Um, for all I know, they do it for legal reasons. Um, I learned this recently. There was a big lawsuit uh, about a year ago between also San Diego Comic-Con and uh, Las Vegas Comic-Con, something like that. And San Diego sued because they said they had the term Comic-Con trademarked, and they won. Uh, which, as soon as I learned this, which was a ways after the fact, I went, wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> I've been going to a lot of these conventions. What do you mean this term is trademarked? <clears throat> so I haven't gotten a straight answer from anybody about it. Uh, I am curious because it's not, I don't know, it's just not something that I uh, expected. How's that look? Uh, flop out the back and I should be good. There we go. I like to keep my pencils loose, so I'm just being a little bit lazy. Let's see. Yep, that'll be perfect. Okay, so uh, what was I saying? Three Rivers Comic Con. But yeah, the staff has, I really like what they do with this con. It's not a guest-based con, uh, which can be fine, but their focus is trying to get people, uh, their real focus is on indie cartoonists, people doing the freelance scene like I am. Then they do bring in um, people who work for the bigger companies, DC, Marvel, Image, uh, companies like that. 
But uh, one of the things that was brought up, I got to talk to one of the head guys, a guy named John, and he mentioned that they try to distribute those guys instead of having them all in one area. Some cons have what's called a professional row, where the people who've already kind of made it are uh, grouped together. And this con's policy was, instead of doing that, we're going to intermix them with the people who are still up and coming because that'll help them get more exposure. And, you know, a lot of times those guys started the way we did. So it could be really nice to have that little bit of extra exposure. Now I'm going to have him with a hand coming up on the side, waving. Yeah, this I'm going to have to move the speech bubble. Let's think about where that's going to be. You know what? I'm just going to ditch the hand. It doesn't need to happen. Y yeah, it doesn't need that hand. Cool. Less drawing for me. <coughs> and I'm going to do, let's say, yeah, I think it was about the right spot. So there are two tools that, uh, because of bad habits related to uh, using keyboard commands in Clip Studio, I keep accidentally switching between the basic pen tool, which I pretty much use for everything, and the uh, uh, mechanical pencil tool, which I don't use at all, um, except when I accidentally select it. Because the same command that gets me to the pencil, the uh, pen tool gets me to the pencil tool if I hit it again. And sometimes I think I've moved away from the tool, I need to push the button, and it keeps moving me back. So you'll sometimes see me make a perfect line and then back out because I realize I'm using the wrong tool. Does it make a huge difference? Not really, honestly, but I notice it and it's going to bug me. So. I try to go back and fix it when I can. All right. Gonna keep it very simple. I think they're just gonna be uh, character outlines anyway on this one. With glasses visible. So part of the reason that I ended up basing uh, these characters on Angela and Abe is Angela's one of the first people I tabled with. She'd been doing it a bit. Um, we both went to the Center for Cartoon Studies together, www.cartoonstudies.org, if you want to check it out. It's a fantastic program in Vermont. Uh, and that head is... Too small for that body. Let's widen it a little bit. That'll do. Um, and she'd been doing the IndyCon circuit for a while and wanted to learn uh, more about it. I don't know the, her exact reasons for coming out to this program besides the fact that it's a fantastic program. I believe she did one of their summer things and then was like, I'm going to get an MFA from them. Like, well, like both of us did. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to go too detailed. That A was her partner. And uh, from what I understand, used to table with her a lot. Probably does again now. Uh, but when we started tabling at uh, CCS, she would split a table with a bunch of us and we'd all table together. And she's one of the first people that kind of showed me the ropes of how tabling works. I need to make this guy wider. There 
we go. Ooh, didn't mean to zoom out that much. Doesn't matter. About to zoom right back in. And we are down to the last of the panel. And we're only a half hour in. That is actually very impressive. So one of the things I've been doing with the replays on this is splitting them up into a bunch of smaller videos that I'm then able to upload onto YouTube and not have be crazy long. And I think what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to break it up based on what task I'm doing. So I'm probably going to do a video for uh, doing the pencils and then one for the inks and then one for uh, coloring and then one for uh, lettering. Although lettering is going to be pretty quick. We'll see how that ends up going. Let's do that. Release that part. Little teary eyes, anime style. I love it. But yeah, uh, it's funny because Angela does have a different tabling style than I do. Uh, and I'd say my style tends to show through in uh, this comic more than hers. Uh, I'd say hers is probably more effective than mine, but mine works for me. Um, I am a bit more of a, uh, of a hard seller than Angela is. Um, Angela's philosophy is you don't try to scare people away from the table. My philosophy is you try to get to get them to the table. Like that's the goal. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. I keep making your face too skinny in the initial drawing. Then you just stretch it a little bit and bam, it's perfect. <sighs> Stupid wrong brush again. But yeah, um, one of the big things that Angela does, which ended up being a big change to how I do things, is she will uh, watercolor while at the desk. I did the here I'm doing for fancy stuff at, at the table, and then sell these little watercolor doodles uh, for not a lot of money, but she'll just do them on index cards and. I started doing the same thing. And what was interesting is that's how I really learned to watercolor. And it's become one of my big things. I love doing watercolors. Um, whenever I do fan art these days, it's almost always watercolor because I like how it looks. I do it well. And most people don't do watercolor, uh, especially live at a, con at a con. I'll do commissions that way. And it's actually done quite well for me. Uh, at a few of the conventions. And that was a big chunk of the money I made at Oticon in particular, just doing watercolors for people live. And I learned how to do that in large part from doing cons with Angela. And I'll tell you, there's a philosophy that you should always start with the best materials, or you should you should always use the best materials you can get and things like that. Uh, I understand that philosophy, but it's also good to learn how to do things on cheap materials. It There are certain advantages to getting decent with that. In this case, I learned how to watercolor painting on uh, index cards, which are terrible as uh, watercolor paper, because they like they rip at the drop of a hat. They do not take water well. Uh, it really weakens them. It really, it, it just, it, it's a bad idea. I, I don't think I need to explain this to you. Doing watercolor on a, it's not a good idea to do watercolor 
when you, uh, on index cards. It, it should just make sense to you. Um, the thing that's funny about it is, because of that, I learned how not to overwork paper, uh, which is kind of an important thing in doing a lot of, uh, in doing watercolor. You learn what you can do, what you can get away with. Do I need to do the... I don't think I do. Is that done? Are those the pencils done? Yeah, I'm going to say those are the pencils done. Great. On to round two, inking.